everybody. My name is Chloe Hudson and welcome to World Peace Projects. Thank you so much for joining me. If you would give me a thumbs up if you like this video or appreciate my work, that really helps me with YouTube. And thank you so much for checking out worldpeaceprojects.global if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one sessions, coaching, courses, classes, all of that is accessible to you there. If you're interested in purchasing the pre-recorded class on compositions of altars and aspects, it is now on sale at worldpeaceprojects.global for $15. Thank you so much. There. So... Today, I am going to do a refresher video on why I perceive channeling and mediumship to be quite dangerous. Now, I've done a video on this in the past, and my disclaimer is that there are many very professional, excellent channelers and mediums out there. Many professions are dangerous. Many activities are dangerous. This is my take from it. I am giving this information with 20 years of experience where for 15 years plus, I primarily channeled um, for my work and my personal life. So I say this with a lot of experience going through what it is that I am going to be explaining today. Now, channeling in mediumship is a technique utilized in the psychic realms, wherein the person that is acting as the medium or the channeler utilizes their body, their consciousness, and many of their faculties as a conduit in which they bring forward or through another energy, being, force, what have you. So in channeling, there is a pretty large mismanagement of sacred boundaries that leaves the channeler open to the will of the external forces. In my experience, it is much more difficult to utilize ESP and telepathy. This is important to understand because telepathy forces us to overcome the hurdles of managing our boundaries and the boundaries of the recipient or that being or person in which we are talking to. When ESP and telepathy is the primary means of communication, it allows our, obje our objectivity to stay intact. Assessing and reading frequencies and intentions are still functioning in this communication style. Though while channeling, there has to be a suspension of one's personal boundaries. This is a requirement for this process in which they become a conduit to happen. The more the channeler embodies the channeled one's perspective and intentions, objectivity is relinquished. So the primary means of instinctual and intuitive protections are put on the back burner. If we couple this with a possible egoic sense of aggrandizement, reverie or adoration and allowance of the channeled one to um, have permissions for enmeshment and overlay, underlay, interlay, et cetera, the medium or the channelers have um, a steady and long, very severe history of decay, unhealthy physical, mental, psychological, and energetic health. If any of you have been viewing or you know engrossed in the metaphysical community for the past few decades, you've bared witness to some of the more, more popular, famous channelers and mediums having a pretty extreme decline in many of their health-related faculties. Um, it's pretty common. I have observed multiple cases of psychosis and debilitating fracturing through the influences or direct outcome of channeling. This is why I'm making this video today, because I have become privy to this happening yet again more recently. Um, and it's very disheartening to me because I understand the possible detriment that is uh, at risk here when it comes to channeling. When channeling is continuously accessed, the distortion of the overlaid frequencies of the beings or energies that are being channeled or allowed access in repaves the bandwidth of frequency range that the channeler accesses. This means that bad practices and boundary invasion is paved even deeper. The fact that many energies are masking love bombing or eluding, coercing, and manipulating the exchange doesn't help. <laughs> 
The sobs are much more difficult to spot while channeling, especially when the channeler is already in a mesmer from the energies, entities, or beings, what have you. So just common basic understandings of accessing de different frequency ranges it's important to understand that the easiest frequencies to access are the densest, the ones that are closest in frequential range to our consciousness. They're right here. They're the easiest to connect with. This means that by default, on average, a majority percentage of channeling and access to these realms is within the denser realms of the fourth dimensional energies or what have you. This also means that ideas, energies, implants, persuasions, imprints, etc., can be seeded into the channeler's consciousness and begin to grow roots or hooks with um, their energetic bodies. Channeling and mediumship often leaves channelers feeling and experiencing difficulty re-embodying themselves once they're completed with the channel. They're often lightheaded, tired, feeling drained, etc. Uh, I remember when I was doing channeling as my full-time gig years and years and years ago, and my energy was always in what I perceived to be these higher dimensional frequencies, which most likely were simply the plane of false white light, which I've done videos on before and we'll touch on lightly here. But after I would wrap up my day's work, I felt so overly energetically up and kind of out of my body, I would often need to find a way to dense down. Um, sometimes it would just be cracking a beer that would dense me down real quick. But I always found that I needed something to bring me back into body to find my baseline frequency. It's easy in channeling, I think, to write this off as you growing and attuning yourself to higher frequencies, but the reality is, is, is we're staying in frequency bandwidths that are not our baseline, and it is very imbalancing. Once the connection between the channeled one and the channeler is severed, there's often a frequency of distortion and static remaining in the channeler's field. This can be experienced as a false bliss mesmer or feeling stunned, like as if when you see somebody that looks stunning. Telepathy requires more present moment sensory, acuity and presence. Channeling is mostly a suspension of presence and acuity and focus. In channeling, one clears away certain energy boundaries and surrenders or submits to specific connections to one being or energy consciousness or any accessible consciousness, maybe. If maybe they're a new channeler and they're just, you know, calling in anything they can access. The frequency and quality, the clarity of the channeling itself, and the safety, integrity, and tension of the channeled message, or what have you, is almost completely dependent on the level, frequency, and quality of the channeler's authentic sovereignty, their will, and their personal boundaries, or their lack thereof. ESP requires more conscious presence and awareness than channeling does. Channeling and mediumship requires a suspension of presence to allow the energy to take over the energetic space and allow the channeler to become an open conduit. In form, they must step back out of their consciousness to allow the energy or being to come in. This is why, even though this statement may be triggering, channeling is a form of possession. Channeling must allow the channeled one to take control and hopefully temporarily possess the channeler's faculties in some capacity. The channeler steps back within a level of their being in presence and consciousness in order for the channeled one to step forward and access this level of the channeler's consciousness. That is how the communication conduit is set up. It's in the base foundation of channeling and mediumship itself. It's an integral part. There is a requirement for the channeled one to drive the channeler's vehicle to some capacity in order for the channeling to be achieved. 
In ESP, what is required is proactive frequency filtering and translating within a mutually accessed frequency bandwidth, much like verbal communication with another being. Then in ESP, the interpretation and multi-senses are often utilized. If the interpreter is using multiple senses other than thought through ESP in order to clarify the communication, ESP requires right and left brain hemispheres to work in correspondence. Channeling requires right brain faculties to dominate and left brain faculties to submit and become more dormant. Another very important aspect to understand about channeling is when I speak about the stepping back of oneself and boundaries in order to allow the channel to one to step forward and utilize the channeler's vessel. Another way of saying this is that the channeler is continuously practicing dissociation in order to allow the channeling to happen. Dissociation is a very common and quite dangerous and precarious experience that happens in our psyche. Dissociation is the root of how aspects and alters the parts of us that are fragmented and fractured and move forward through our subconscious to expose themselves into our consciousness are able to function within our system. Without dissociation, the aspect would not be able to live inside you. You would be aware of everything going on. Dissociation pulls you out of your present moment and makes you highly, highly susceptible and vulnerable to hypnosis, covert programming, subliminal messaging, inferences, manipulation, coercion, what have you. This could be on a very minor level, just being persuaded by society or people around you. Or this could be in a very catastrophic way. Dissociation is never recommended and people spend years and years of their lives working to get back in body from dissociation. When a channeler is practicing the stepping back of oneself or dissociating a part of them in order to allow another energy or being to come forward, they are continuously habituating a pattern of dissociation. They're making it more difficult, in essence, for them to stay in body and re-embody, especially if they are doing this as a full-time business gig. They're constantly dissociating, which is reinforcing this every day over and over again. And there is a lot of issues that comes with this outside of channeling when we are constantly practicing staying out of body. It can be quite hazardous for the systems for many reasons. When low-level energies and distortions present themselves, they are more apparent during ESP. These can be observed and maneuvered with proactive awareness because we're present or in our body. ESP has no need for one to step out of their consciousness. Rather, they must tune in even more to their present moment consciousness in order to have this nonverbal communication and interaction. When low-level energies and distortions are presented during channeling, usually either the channeler chooses to terminate the connection or they choose to surrender their consciousness even more to the channeled one in hopes that the distortion will dissipate out. For example, when I was still utilizing channeling, I learned that beings that had not transitioned from this energetic plane to the next energetic plane properly perhaps because of suicide, maybe they were disembodied spirits, conflicted souls, most all beings that had what we term died in this earth world and were in the afterlife. Many of them were prime candidates for imprinting unsafe energy distortions and uncomfortable emotional and energetic impositions into my field. The action-reaction principle and other natural laws will create consequences of any imbalance. When a channeler or medium gives way on their balance of their personal boundaries, the scales tip in the favor of the channeled one to partake in the amenities of the channeler's personal and energetic property. We have all experienced loaning items out and them being returned in a depreciated and devalued condition. 
This is the same type of energy exchange. If the being or energy that is being channeled does not have full appreciation and respect for the channeler's energy. A more universal example could be when someone plays with magic or natural energetic forces. Perhaps we've seen this plenty in fantasy type movies. And the consequence is to the detriment of the magician or the user's previously holistic integral forces. The powers take a toll. They cause a consequence of distortion and impurity within the user. ESP and telepathy are the natural and innate language and interplay between and within all existence. It's a part of your born legacy, and it's an inheritance as a child of creation. The engagement and development of your telepathy integrates you and your spirit to body connection and relationship of creation with all her children. Nature, animals, babies, they all communicate telepathically. Adults have simply forgotten how to do this, but you were born with this ability and you were learned out of it. It offers a balanced space of consciousness in which your fair and level exchange of energy and understanding through communication can be experienced for both and all parties. It also clarifies and teaches specific and personal boundaries more thoroughly. So it's very important to understand that in the makeup of channeling and mediumship, there is a requirement to suspend boundaries, to become much more malleable in the channeler's boundaries. And in ESP, it is a requirement to practice more boundaries, to learn more about healthy boundaries, not just for self, but for other beings. An example I can share of this is that since I'm currently writing the animal communication course, I have been interviewing a plethora of different animals. And I have learned that certain birds do not desire engagement or interaction at any capacity, including telepathy with humans. Now, if I had attempted to channel the birds instead of utilizing ESP and instinctual inferences that we experience when engaging with nature, the clarity and preferences and specifics of these birds and why they have these preferences would have been lost through the attempt in channeling. This is because there would have not been an initial introduction to the respect of their personal boundaries that was even offered in the first place. I simply would have opened up to channeling, called on the energy of the birds, and maybe they would not have even shown up because that's not enjoyable for them, or I wouldn't have gotten anything would have been distorted, and I wouldn't have clarity why, because all I'm doing is opening up my boundaries and asking them to come in and utilize them. They're not interested in that, but there's no clarification in that because it's not a very clear communication style. There's also an addictive aspect of channeling. Often there is a perceived high of higher energetic frequencies that is not the normal baseline frequency or experience of the channeler. This is often only ach achieved while channeling. There's a high in this energy. There is a, an addiction that can come about and a desire to re-experience these frequencies and get a fill or a fix. This is very common. This can go into, again, the false white light and the false bliss frequencies. But if you were to step back and observe this, you could see very quickly that these energies are extremely seductive. They're elusive, alluring, and addictive. So understanding that communicating through telepathic engagement is as safe as verbal communication. Depending on how you choose <laughs> to communicate can, you know, set the platform for the type of interaction, but it doesn't give energies or entities or beings permissions to invade your boundaries simply by conveying messages and communicating. Channeling that boundary invasion is a requirement. I hope this was informative and educational. Again, I would like to state that I know there are really brilliant, professional, very amazing channelers and mediums. I have experienced many of them and engaged with them. I'm simply giving warning because I find that channeling is a fairly easily accessible platform in which you can interact with certain beings, but there's reasons why it is dangerous. 
And if one has been integrated in channeling for many years, when they come to another side of it and see what's happening in the background energetically, it can be very disturbing and disheartening to understand how much other outside energies one has given permission into their field. And now they have to clear that out. If you're interested in coaching courses, classes, please check out my website, World Peace Projects. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks, guys. I hope this was informative. Have a great day. Bye-bye.